first out of the year. Sure. I, I, I've split those in the past. Right. Every year it's well, I'll just combine them. Yeah. To me, it doesn't matter because I'm dealing with the, the issues. So. Right. But that was a good point by the channel because they, they, they have two different type of, two different type of items. The funding source is the same. But the funding Free source cash. is the same. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But one's equipment and one's more. Yeah. Okay. So, um, not hearing any other questions, I will note that the Finance Committee recommended adoption of Article 5, and I would entertain any motions my colleagues wish to offer. I'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 5. I will second that. Okay, so we have a motion made by Mr. Panelitis, seconded by Mr. Kratman. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. That brings us to Article 6. <coughs> Article 6 indicates that uh, general fund free cash uh, to the sum of $207,500 will be used to purchase the following. And rather than me read each of those items, because I know Mr. Montori is going to detail the specifics, I will um, defer it to him. But we're going to, the article in essence is asking us to use free cash uh, to um, purchase or spend on uh, various items. Correct. These are items for the school department as identified in the plans. Um, first item they're looking to purchase is a um, pickup truck um, with a plow for um, maintaining school grounds um, to uh, be added to their fleet of vehicles, um, of which um, the, the fleet is um, aging. Uh, the new pickup truck with plow uh, will allow uh, all of the other and the members of the maintenance department to uh, supplement the plowing and sanding of the DPW when uh, there's a spot work to be done when they're, uh, when they're not there during the winter, but also help with uh, grounds and maintenance work. Uh, the water boilers at the Wind and Ryan School uh, need to be replaced. Uh, I believe um, one of them has already failed, uh, so the, the need for this funding is uh, now becoming an emergency. Pipe work at the doing needs to be replaced based upon the review um, by the staff. And the cost of uh, pipe work is $15,000. Um, the department is looking to purchase a, a water tank for the back of the trucks in the, the amount of $3,500 to supplement the watering um, of the islands at the high school. As you know, from going to high school, the, the plantings are spread apart more so in the previous uh, location, so the water tank is needed to, to maintain the, uh, the islands. Uh, the wind presentation system in, in the classrooms uh, are over 10 years old. Uh, the $20,000 will update the computer system and the smart boards uh, within, the, uh, within the school. And then finally, um, the uh, schools are looking to do a feasibility and condition study uh, of the center school. Uh, utilizing one of the architects we, ha uh, architects we have on, on board in town uh, to conduct the study and determine uh, what, if any, work can be done to upgrade that building to make it uh, more efficient uh, and a uh, proper administration building that currently is. I think those of us who have been in there uh, will know that that building needs to be upgraded or at least start understanding what needs to be fixed uh, so we can do it, in, if anything, a phased approach. Has a specific architectural firm been solicited? Yeah, we have. Um, I went out to bid uh, maybe a year, year or so ago to hire what we call house doctor contracts. Mm -hmm. um, we interviewed, there was a committee made up of the superintendent of the schools, um, uh, director of community development, uh, DPW, um, to uh, hire architectural firms that we would keep on call as we need them. So we hired CBI, King Associates, and HKT uh, for three-year contracts. So as we need them, <coughs> they're already vetted, and uh, they, they can use HKT for this one. Okay. And we've had good luck with uh, all three of those. All three of those. HKT we used for the first time, but my initial dealings with them were very good. Yeah. Um, CBI and HK uh, and Kang, um, yeah. they're working on the town hall. Kang's. Uh, Opening bids in the Yellow Fleming School this week. CBI did the assault shed, so we mm -hmm. that right now. Okay. okay, so all these expenses are for at the request of our colleagues at the school department. Yes. Um, are there questions about these items? I just have one quick one. It's it's a, it's a minor issue, but 
the water tank for the back of the truck to water the island trees at the high school. I know the town beautification committee has an adopted an island program. Can we use that same truck to water the islands in town as well? And sure, you can ask. Okay. I'll see why not. Does the uh, Department of Public Works have a water truck also? No. No? <coughs> so this would be the only one. Water is expensive town. Yeah. We can ship it in on the water tank and then bring it. <laughs> we, we talked about getting one, it just, um, we just never did. If, you well, know, we talked to beautification, but if we got work we block. In many ways, we're, we're urging people to conserve, so it is kind of a mixed message, too. Although I appreciate the point, Mr. Wentworth. But if we're investing the resource for just the high school, I would think that sure. we can drive that around. And, and yeah, it's, that. it's like everything else comes down to staffing and time. Yeah. You know? Maybe we can have somebody sort of help if the beer is all being used. Yet. I'm happy to drive if you want to drive that truck. <laughs> I'm not sure you're qualified. I'm not sure you're going to get glasses. I'm not going to get glasses. We won't be able to afford the insurance liability. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we don't have any other questions. Um, I will note that um, in this particular article, um, the vote by the Finance Committee was four in favor, one opposed. Um, for various questions pertaining to the purposes of some of the expenditures. So that is made, mentioned as informational, and I'd ask uh, if my colleagues have any uh, motions they wish to make. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 6. Second. Okay, a motion's been made by Mr. Gay, and second by Mr. Panelitis to recommend adoption. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair will make that unanimous as well. Article 7 um, reflects that uh, at the special town meeting in October of 2014, a year ago, funds were approved to purchase cafeteria tables for the four elementary schools, and the $90,000 appropriation made then has a remaining balance of $41,815.85 and thus uh, the town, the article is requesting that town meeting approve use of those remaining funds to purchase additional furniture for use of the school department. This is an article, this, this type of article we've done before where we have surplus um, of um, any amount really that we've gone back to town meeting asking them to reallocate for um, a broader purpose within the article or for New, uh, new uh, reason. Uh, the, the balance in this article uh, of forty-one thousand dollars is due to the uh, the discount to the price that actually came in for the cost of the cafeteria tables once they had once the school department went to buy them. Uh, the discount that they received was much greater than they ever imagined. And that's why there's a surplus uh, in the uh, in the account. And what they'd like to do is to reallocate the money for just in general furniture throughout the district. Um, I know there's some desks in the elementary schools they like to purchase and some other items, so I think it's a good use of the funds. And um, we're often accused of just spending all the money regardless if it's completed its purpose. And, um, I think if, to the contrary, we come back to town meeting, no matter what the balance is, and say we want to, just to make sure they understand we want to use it for something of a broad purpose, and that's what we want to do. So I think it's a good use of the funds. Any questions? No, I think the business manager outlined some of the areas that they were going to use the funds for with the, with the desk, and and if anything changed with the schools and and we you know, we built a new school in the future, this furniture could be, be reused. Yeah. Okay, um, Mr. Wentworth, based on your comments, do you have a motion? To I'll I'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article Seven. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Motion made by Mr. Wentworth, seconded by Mr. Crabman. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The chair votes aye as well. That would be unanimous. Article 8. This proposes to take $10,000 from general fund, fund free cash um, that I guess was funds considered surplus from the assessor's overlay reserve. And the purpose would be to fund 
or expand. No, that, that, am I reading this correct, Mr. Montero? Right. Well, you're, you're reading it correct. I don't know. Okay. Um, I took that. That's a lot of explanations from town meeting. In May, we use the overlay reserve to help fund this. We would use in general fund for cash. cash. Yeah. All right. And so let me restate that. that. We'll have to make a yeah. comment about the executive summary. But the the article itself would use ten thousand from general fund free cash to um, support the senior tax relief work program and veterans tax relief program. Um, and if I have my history right, this would actually expand the program slightly. Yes, we have twenty-five thousand dollars that we transferred from the overlay reserve in May. Um, we have um, more applicants than we can fund. This ten thousand dollars will allow us to uh, fund um, the remaining applicants and you know, positions that we have available. So, okay. so we'll have to uh, speak with the moderator tomorrow morning at our pre-town meeting preparation meeting. Um, about how we should handle the adjustment to the executive summary. Maybe it's a Scrivener's error yeah. or an amendment needs to be offered. It's not the article itself, it's the summary. It's usually just a... It's probably a... It's not an amendment. It's not yeah. part of the, yeah. the uh, article. Yeah. All right, so um, this has been a great program. And, um, it was kicked off uh, in your tenure and at the urging of the Board of Selectmen and with your full cooperation and same by all accounts everyone who has touched this program um, has had very positive things to say about it and I know that uh, the, the school committee uh, representatives and school administration as well as you and your staff have all had positive comments about uh, people, uh, seniors and veterans who have participated so um, very positive thing. Um, has my full support. I'd ask if any questions, uh, any of my uh, colleagues have any questions. If not, any motions? I'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 8. <clears throat> I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That would be unanimous, and that would mirror the unanimous vote of the Finance Committee to also recommend <coughs> adoption. Article 9 was referenced by the town manager in his discussion on financial um, uh, practices and our, our goals and this article would uh, transfer from certified free cash um, $350,000 to the other post-employment benefits otherwise known as OPEB toward our outstanding unfunded liability. Mr. Montreux, do you want to add anything to that? No, it's just um, it's far less than what hmm. it should be contributing but it's really what we can afford to at this time. The hundred and sixty six million dollar unfunded liability is uh, probably just gonna grow as time goes on. Yeah. Over the next couple of months I tend to have Dan Sherman, the actuary who did the most recent study can do a presentation to the about the liability and get to it. Okay. Any questions? I know that our bond rating is double A negative right now. Wilmington just moved from double A negative to double A positive. And Karen is either she had a meeting or she's. No, we have a meeting. We have a meeting with the standard boards towards the end of the month. Okay. To, towards the end of October, we'll do our next bar. Okay. So hopefully this helps. The, um, we funded OPEP for the last two years at $350,000. We've invested the funds with the state. Um, with the credit fund, and um, today we have $740,000 in the accounts. So we've done very well from an uh, investment standpoint. Uh, this will be added to that. Hopefully, the share continues to grow. Maybe at some point we can have one. So okay. I think the financial agencies or the financial rating agencies will look positive, positively upon this and positively, positively upon the next article, which is putting money back into the stabilization fund. Yeah. And the first article, we were funding budgets through our current partners. So. Okay, great. Yeah, and, and um, based on the last um, rating agency call, maybe a year or so ago, that um, I participated in along with the town manager and his, his finance department, um, it's clear that $350,000 isn't sufficient, but it is also equally clear that um, the discipline of doing this year over year is essential. If we don't honor this pattern that we've now put as a matter of policy, um, 
that without a doubt is not going to bode well for us relative to the rating agencies. I, the discipline of supporting the commitment and, and um, making consistent payments to that is, is, in my mind, it's critical to um, our credibility. So, for whatever that's worth. And I know the FinCom mentioned that we were at the lower end of communities around us in terms of that contribution. Yeah, well, um, I, 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 we might be. I, I have to yeah. check because I'm not sure all the communities are contributing. Okay. Um, but, you know, we very well could. Yeah. All right. So, no further questions. Finance Committee uh, voted uh, to adopt the article, recommended option the article. I'd ask if there are motions from my colleagues. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to the adoption of the article. Second. Okay, we have a motion made by Mr. Gay, seconded by Mr. Wentworth. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. We're unanimously in support of that. Article 10. Um, this article, again, is consistent with the policies that we discussed earlier and would uh, take $1,637,157 from certified general fund free cash and move it into the stabilization fund. And as the town manager explained a short time ago, would come close but not uh, replace the funds that we used from the stabilization fund at the annual town meeting in May. Yeah, by adding this to the stabilization fund, the uh, balance in the stabilization fund will uh, increase to about three point three million dollars. Uh, it's currently at one million seven twenty seven three six. Okay. If there are no further questions, the finance committee recommended adoption. I'd ask if my colleagues have motions. I'll make a motion to adopt. Do we have a second? We have a second. A motion made by Mr. Kravitz, seconded by Mr. Panelitis. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye on that article as well. That would be unanimous. Article 11. This is a Community Preservation Committee sponsored article. Um, and the executive summary f reflects that the uh, Tuxbury School Department and the CPC. Uh, request approval to utilize CPA funds or Community Preservation Act funds to rehabilitate Strong Field and the high school baseball field um, and delineates uh, all of the steps taken from uh, grass, backstop, fencing, uh, benches, etc. Um, towards uh, that effort. Um, Mr. Montori, do you want to shed any more color on this? Uh, I mean, I think the article is pretty straightforward. The CPA, the CPC uh, voted in favor of the article um, present, as presented by the school, school department. Um, the fund is being ta taken out of the undesignated reserve um, to fund um, the work. And I think anybody that's been out there um, will agree that the, the field needs to be upgraded, uh, the area needs to be improved. That's really the last piece of that overall project at the high school uh, that needs to be done to make it complete. And the CPC um, uncommitted budget can sustain this type of expenditure? Yeah, I remember it's about, it's about $755,000 in net um, remaining in that fund. Um, that's not counting the new revenue coming this year. Um, <coughs> All right, other questions? If not, any motions? I'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 11. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, sir. Motion made by Mr. Panelitis, seconded by Mr. Gay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. That would be unanimous. Article 12 also would um, utilize, uh, is presented by the Community Preservation Committee and um, would ask the town manager as the parks director and the community, community preservation committee uh, request approval of CPA funds to rehabilitate the Livingston Street recreation area by um, replacing fencing throughout um, that recreation area um, and backstops, if I recall correctly. Um, and this would involve the use of um, $100,000 $100,000 from the I'm sorry, open right. space fund and yep. $100,000 from the undesignated fund. Total of two. The reason for the split is the 
I'm designated on that approximately 185,000 dollars. So okay, any questions about that? The Finance Committee recommended adoption. What's the Board of Selectmen's pleasure? I'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 12. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion made by Mr. Wentworth, seconded by Mr. Kratman. All of us in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. That brings us to Article Number 13. This article, um, I'll ask the town manager to explain, but the article effectively, via the executive summary, would authorize the town to potentially borrow $5 million for the cost of construction and engineering related to the closure and remediation of the Sutton Brook landfill. And that step would be taken in accordance with the agreement signed in 2009 among all the potentially responsible parties of which the town of Tewksbury is a 21%, 24%, 24%. Um, responsible party. <clears throat> so do you want to shed some more light on this one, Mr. Montari? Yes. Um, this past uh, summer, last four, four months or so, the group has been talking about the possibility of um, solar at the summer landfill. In our discussions, we were talking about the costs involved, and the remaining costs involved closing the landfill, and uh, future maintenance of the landfill. During the discussion, one of the members of the um, potentially responsible party asked, um, has the town, you know, we're assuming the town has met all its obligations and one of them being $5 million authorized uh, to borrow if needed to fund our, our costs. When I was asked about it, I had no idea we had that obligation. So uh, from talking to our attorney, uh, Matt Donahue, uh, going back over the agreement, Back to town in 2009 was to authorize uh, the borrowing of $5 million. Whether they borrowed it or not was a whole story, but just to have it there in case there was a default of some sort. So um, they asked about it, they want to make sure we do it. So this is to meet our obligation uh, per the agreement. Um, our cost to um, participate in capping and, and closing the landfill, uh, we're paying on the yearly basis over a 30 year period. The total cost over that 30 years is about $10 million when I, when I was looking at it. If we pay out a lump sum and borrow this money, uh, we may be on a cheaper payment schedule, so I'm looking at that right now. It may save us some money, so I need to understand more what our costs are, what our obligations are. But right now, we don't intend to spend the money but I don't want to mislead anybody who may in fact do so if it means our payment schedule will be reduced and we can save some money. So the, the steps that you're taking to put this article forward are in relation to the consent decree that all the PRPs executed and also the agreement among the PRPs, among PRPs yeah. that obligated us to pay 24% of the remediation expenses? It was, yeah, it was 24%, approximately 24% of the construction, the cost of construction of future maintenance. And, and at the time in 2009, which I will note also predated your employment here, but um, we entered into an annual payment plan Instead of borrowing the five million, instead of coming up with the bumps, yeah. So, which at the time you know, could have made sense based on the, the cost projection of capital the landfill was somewhere over thirty-one million dollars. I think it came less than that. So we just have to, we need to go back and understand what the costs are. Yeah. And annually, at the annual town meeting in the budget, you have an expenditure approximately three hundred and seventy-five for that one thirtieth expense. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, just to repeat, your intention at the moment is to honor the obligation that we're required to meet, um, but do further <coughs> research as to the potential of actually yeah. borrowing. We're so looking at where we have a borrowing at the end of October, beginning of November for the water treatment plant. So we'll be opening bids for that. We'll need to do a borrowing for that. So, depending on our analysis, if it makes sense to borrow this money, we'll do so at the same time. Questions on that? 
Um, a bond rating. <coughs> we brought that up at the, uh, the previous thing. Uh, that consideration if we're minus double A. I mean, is this something that we may want to think about in the future? Or oh, looking at this? Yeah, I'm hoping when we, when we we have the borrowing in uh, at the end of October, early November, we'll have a chance to speak to the rating agencies again, and we're going to make a push to have an upgrade. Okay. <coughs> and I hope they do. And Mr. Chair, just wanted to note just. Since we're talking about some work and the question was asked at the last meeting about some milestones they yes. the meeting. Um, my understanding is the last few truckloads will be coming in this week. The last few? Yeah. Very good. Which is amazing considering where we started. No. Concerning where uh, the residents yeah. endure a lot in the last yeah. couple of years, upwards of 15,000, 20,000 truckloads, and they're coming to an end. And you see sporadic trucks in there with the actual haul of the trucks on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. That's terrific. Good news. Okay. All right. So the Finance Committee, um, after asking some questions, agreed or made recommendation to uh, adopt this particular article. I'd ask if there are any motions by my colleagues. I'll make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 13. Second. Okay, the motion made by Mr. Panelitis, seconded by Mr. Wentworth. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. That would bring us to Article 14. And Article 14, um, as presented, would seek to adjust the pay scale for the outreach worker and activities coordinator in Addendum D of the Personnel Bylaw and adds a new position of nutrition aid. Um, and the article itself delineates the men and max of the compensation levels. Mr. Monterey? So, <coughs> purpose of this article is to take, um, this is for employees in addendum D of our personal bylaw, which are our employees. <coughs> Instead of having a set hourly wage to give us a range in which to hire people based on our um, experience, uh, we do have an outreach worker currently um, employed uh, by the town uh, and within the town's budget. Um, we are expanding uh, the outreach worker's hours for a grant, and that same grant is going to fund an activities coordinator and a nutrition aid. So the activities coordinator and outreach worker are within the personnel bylaw. We'd like to have ranges for this salary. The nutrition aid worker is uh, a new position which we'd like to add include a salary range and nutrition aid worker will also be working on the salad bottle and uh, installing that at the um, senior center. Uh, thanks. Any questions on that? Does this in any way fall under the uh, full re redo you did of, uh, with the steps and uh, of the other salaries in town? It actually, when we did the steps and the whole upgrade, we did everything we, did, um, we didn't do uh, D, which is our hourlies. So we're, we're kind of going through that and cleaning it up as we go along. Because I just wonder about setting dollar values, because presumably in the future we're going to have to come back and adjust those dollar values. We actually went through um, other communities to find out the range and so we came up with this. There was a helpful website for personnel administrators that gave us a good idea for ranges. Mm -hmm. So being hourly, I think this is the type of thing that we we'll probably do piecemeal. Because some, and, and one of the things I want to do next time around is to go through the bylaw and clean up other language because there are some positions in it that we're never going 